Hello everybody. So today I'm going to do the lecture that I would have done if I was in class today about the gas laws. So please make sure that you are writing down anything that is highlighted. So the kinetic molecular theory talks about the behavior of gases. It actually talks about the solids, liquids, and gases, but for this unit we're just going to focus on gases. So this kinetic molecular theory, the first thing it says is that all matter has tiny particles that are in constant motion. So these gas particles that are floating around all the time are constantly moving and they're bouncing off the walls and they're moving in random directions. And so this theory kind of explains that in a little more detail with four main points, which they call postulates. So the first main point here is that gases consist of small particles that are separated by empty space. And so we know this already because the air in the front of the room is the same air that's in the back of the room. And we know this because the students in the back are breathing just as well as the people in the front. So we know that gases spread out and there is a lot of space between their particles. And so because the particles are so far apart, the first main point is that they say there are no attractive or repulsive forces holding the particles to each other. That's very different from a solid because in a solid, the particles are close together and they are attracted to each other. So in a gas, the particles are not together. The second postulate is basically a restatement of what the kinetic molecular theory says, which is that gas particles are in constant random motion. So they're saying that the particles will move in a straight line, so they're not, they're not necessarily moving in a random pattern but they're moving in a straight line, bounce off something, and then move in a random direction. So they're not like doing a little wave or a dance or something as they're moving. They're moving in a straight line until they hit something and then they bounce off, move in a random direction. And so when these particles bounce off each other, that is called an elastic collision. And so in an elastic collision, you don't lose any energy, but it's just transferred from one surface or one substance to another. So all collisions between gas particles are elastic, meaning that they hit each other, they bounce off, and then move in another direction. The third postulate says that kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. And so temperature is actually a measure of the average kinetic energy of a system. And so kinetic energy is the energy in motion of a substance. And so as the temperature increases, the particles move faster and they have more energy. And that's because temperature and kinetic energy are proportional to each other. And so if you increase the temperature, you're increasing the energy of motion, the kinetic energy. And so it makes sense then that the particles are going to move faster. So at higher temperatures, the particles are moving faster. The fourth, fourth postulate talks about how gases are compressible. And the reason why gases are compressible is because there is a lot of space between the particles. So if you think about you get a bag of chips from a vending machine, what's mostly in the bag? Air, right? You get gypped when you get by a bag of chips because like a quarter of the bag is the chips and then the rest of the bag is the air. And so if you choose not to eat the entire bag of chips and you roll it up, well, what are you doing? You're compressing the air that's in the bag of chips. So you're getting the air out of the bag so that there's not a lot of space between the, the chips left in the bag. So gases are able to be compressed because there's so much space between the particles. So those are the four postulates of the kinetic molecular theory. Now this picture here is showing you how you can force a gas to be smaller. So initially you have 100 kPa of pressure. kPa is a pressure unit, which I'll talk about in just a second. And so when you push this piston down, what you're doing is you're compressing the gas and so you're decreasing the space between the particles. And so when you do that, you're increasing the pressure. Why? Because now there's less space for the, ga the gas particles to move around. And so now they're going to bounce off of each other more. And when they do that, the more often they bounce off of each other, the more pressure it creates. So as you decrease the size of the container, the pressure increases because there's less room for the particles to move around. So this middle picture is like your normal state. And then like we just talked about on the previous slide, if you compress a gas, you get rid of the space between the particles. So there's gonna be more pressure here. But if you increase the space between the particles, 
you're going to decrease the pressure because now there's more space for the particles to move around. So if you compress a gas, you increase the pressure. And if you expand a gas, you're going to decrease the pressure. So this slide is basically what I talked about a couple slides ago, that as you increase the temperature, the, the faster the particles move. And that has to do with kinetic energy. So as the temperature increases, the energy of the particles increases, which makes the particles move faster. And it's the exact opposite is also true. So if you lower the temperature, then the particles are moving slower. And so the kinetic energy is decreased as well. So then this slide, properties of gases, this slide summarizes the postulates of matter. So the three main properties of gases, they are compressible. So how much space can you take out, basically? So again, if you roll up your bag of chips, you are compressing the air that is in there, so you're removing the space between the chips. Also takes the shape and the volume of their container. So a gas moves in a random motion, and so as soon as it sees a spot to seep in, it's going to go into that container and it's going to expand. Because if I have space to spread out, why am I not going to do it? And so that's what the second point means. And then finally, it has a low density compared to a liquid and a solid. And so this is sort of like a flashback from way back in August when we talked about density. And we know that solids have the greatest density, and that's because the particles are packed so close together. Whereas in a gas, the particles are so far apart that it's going to have a low density. So since density is how many particles are packed into a volume, in a gas, there's not going to be a lot of particles because they're so spread out. So that's why a gas has a much lower density than a liquid or a solid. All right, so gas pressure. Pressure happens when a force is dispersed over a surface area. So if we look at these three shoes, which shoes create the most pressure and why? So we have high heels, we have sneakers, and then we have snowshoes. So the high heels are gonna create the most pressure on your feet. And the reason why is because all of your weight is going to be distributed in the heel here. Whereas in the sneaker and the snowshoes, the, your weight is gonna be more evenly distributed. So there's more space for your foot to kind of spread out in these types of shoes. Whereas in a high heel, all of your weight is balanced here on this small spike. So this is what I just talked about. If the force acts over a large area, your weight being the force, so this is a large area for your feet, then small force, large area, small pressure. But if you have all of your weight acting over this small area, force over the area is going to get you a large pressure. So here's another definition of gas pressure. It's the constant bombardment of gas molecules against the wall of a container. So every time a gas molecule hits the side of the container, it is getting more and more pressure. So if you think about if you are hitting somebody, you know, you're just poking them, okay, and they continue to get more and more irritated with you, eventually they're going to explode because you are causing them stress because you are just constantly bombarding them. And then this other thing I have highlighted here, STP, equals standard pressure and temperature. Standard pressure is one atmosphere, and the temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So air pressure. Air pressure is lower at higher altitudes. So let's think about Denver. Denver is called the Mile High City, and it is the Mile High City because it is one mile above sea level. And so if you're familiar with the Denver Broncos, it's a football team, then all of the players that are not from Denver usually have to sit on the sidelines with oxygen masks. And the reason why is because they're not used to their bodies running at with less oxygen. And so you have less oxygen at a higher altitude because you have less gravity pulling the oxygen molecules down. So when you are at a lower altitude, there is more oxygen and if you're at a higher altitude, there's less oxygen because there is less gravity. And so then some things that affect gas pressure, the moles of a gas, the volume, and then the temperature. And for all uh, equations or all problems in this unit, 
you have to convert your temperature to Kelvin. So to do that, all you do is you take your Celsius temperature and you add 273 to it and you will get Kelvin. These units here, these are on the gas laws reference sheet, which is on Schoology. And so these are the units that you are going to use to convert between pressure units. And so in just a second, I will go through and do some pressure units with you so that you understand how to convert between the units. So I am going to reference the gas laws reference sheet, and I'm going to do these problems on a separate sheet of paper in another video so that you can see exactly how to convert between pressure units.